joining me for this session on engaging teachers in professional learning through UDL. My name is Leanne Woodley. I work at the Association of Independent Schools in New South Wales, Australia. Over the past five years, I have developed a passion in sharing the UDL framework with teachers as an approach to design inclusive lessons, assessments and units of work. The Association of Independent Schools is a peak body supporting and representing independent education in New South Wales. In the Student Services team, we provide consultancy support and professional learning focused on students with additional needs and effective literacy and numeracy instruction. In this session, I would like to explore with you a planning process for professional learning design and how we linked the principles of effective professional learning to UDL and share with you some examples of practice and resources that we used to promote teacher engagement with the UDL framework. The school in this case study was a regional high school outside of Sydney. The school approached AIS to partner with them to develop a professional learning program to engage teachers in the UDL framework. The school wanted to use the framework to proactively design inclusive learning and assessment experiences for students. The school undertook a thorough planning process to design the professional learning. First, the staff identified the needs that they had. This was done through consultation and surveys. It was identified that the staff needed to build capacity to design assessments that were engaging, accessible and met the diverse needs of all their students. This priority then became part of the school's improvement plan for the next three years. Key features of the effective professional learning principles and foundations were examined to ensure that each element was included in the professional learning design. The phases of implementation science were also used. Each phase of the CAST's professional learning UDL implementation process were considered. And finally, it resulted in a professional learning plan for the school that was co-designed and constructed with school leaders. The Professional Learning Initiative became a school-based UDL pilot project. The project was mapped out over three years using the Professional Learning UDL implementation process from CAST. In the beginning of 2018, it was identified there was a need to change which was to support teachers to design more inclusive assessment experiences for students. This was determined and prioritised and became an integral component of the school's improvement plan. 2018 also saw the exploration of UDL with a twilight session arranged for all staff. The purpose was to build awareness of the UDL framework and provide an invitation to teachers to become part of the UDL school-based team that would begin the pilot project in 2019. At the beginning of 2019, the school leadership team, in conjunction with the AIS consultant, developed the professional learning schedule, which included timetables of sessions, establishing a community of practice and expectations. A pre-project survey was done to collect data from teachers who had volunteered to be part of the UDL project. Professional sessions commenced mid-2019, with teachers becoming the school's UDL champions. There were also between-session activities, and the UDL champions provided feedback to the whole staff at meetings to maintain the whole school focus. Mentoring and expanding saw the UDL champions begin to work alongside other staff to expand their knowledge of the UDL framework into classroom practice and assessment design. Post-survey data was also collected, which I will share with you soon. 2020 will see the project scale up to whole school practice, with staff embedding the UDL principles into their practice and policies. The school is currently planning approaches for this. Alongside the UDL implementation process, we wanted to build in the principles of effective professional learning. Based on the work of Professor Linda Darling-Hammond, several key components were identified for inclusion in the professional learning design. It needed to be content focused. Each professional learning session had a clear focus on the UDL framework with links to assessment practices. The learning intentions were shared with teachers, sessions built upon each other, 
focusing on making connections and the transfer of the UDL principles, guidelines and checkpoints into the school context. Incorporating active learning. Teachers in each session participated in activities designed to highlight the UDL principles. Multiple means of representation guidelines were used to deliver the content about the UDL framework. Teachers had access to readings, online resources and videos to view. Teachers were provided with choice and autonomy in which components of the framework they explored, highlighting multiple means of engagement. Many of the activities during the sessions were designed to model what teachers could do in their classrooms. Supporting collaboration. Each session provided opportunities for teachers to share ideas and collaborate. Teachers were able to share which UDL guidelines they had been focusing on and learn from the experiences of their colleagues. The between session activities and the school-based community of practice were designed to foster opportunities for teacher collaboration. Modelling effective practice. Models and examples of the UDL in practice were provided, mostly through video snippets. Additional video clips were requested for specific subjects, which were sourced and included in subsequent sessions. Sample UDL unit plans, lesson plans and assessment tasks were provided for teachers to critique and to identify the UDL checkpoints. These samples also formed the basis of the between session activities to consolidate learning. Providing coaching and expert support. Coaching and support was ongoing during the sessions. Working in small groups, teachers were able to ask questions and discuss some of the implementation barriers they were facing. Additional resources were provided for individual teachers when requested. And opportunities were provided to receive individual support for assessment design using the UDL framework. Feedback and reflection. The school-based UDL community of practice was established as an avenue to provide teachers opportunities to reflect and discuss on the application of the UDL framework between sessions. Teachers were also provided with an opportunity to give and receive feedback on assessment experiences developed by a colleague from a different subject area. Teachers were encouraged to give feedback to the consultant, which resulted in sessions being adjusted to more effectively meet the needs of the group. Sustained duration. The UDL project ran over term two and three in 2019 and involved three sessions per term. The sessions were spaced approximately two weeks apart. This was intentionally designed to allow for the consolidation of new knowledge and for teachers to be able to trial aspects of the UDL framework in their classes. Let's explore some of the examples and resources that were developed to support the professional learning sessions. To recruit interest and to set the case for change, print material, infographics and video clips were used to get teachers thinking about the role education plays in preparing students for post-school options. Teachers were able to make connections with the skills students needed for the workforce and the qualities of an expert learner. Every session built in choice on activities for teachers to participate in, developing their understanding of the UDL framework. Teachers were provided with options to work independently or in groups. Jigsaw activities were used where there was a lot of content to access. This promoted collaboration between staff and across different subject areas. Each session began with a reflection activity. This is an example of one that was used where teachers had to reflect on what they had been thinking about, talking about and sharing with others. In the representation principle, activating prior learning from the previous sessions was incorporated. This was often completed in small groups and then shared. Material and content was provided to teachers in multiple modes. This is an example of a Google Doc where teachers could either read or watch to learn about the principle of action and expression. This also facilitated choice and autonomy. Resource cards were developed to access content, providing another example of how they could provide options for students. Teachers were able to use the resource cards based on an area they were interested in to develop further. Video examples of UDL planned lessons were used. These were well received as they were examples from Australian classrooms. Teachers could relate to these. The videos highlighted the guidelines and the checkpoints of the UDL framework 
enabling teachers to see it in practice. Another resource developed was the UDL checkpoints on cards. This then made up a deck of cards. Teachers could choose cards to make up their hand of guidelines they wanted to focus on and explore in practice. A variety of scaffolds were developed to support note-taking and organisation of learning. These were used in different ways by teachers and were also available in digital copies. Worked examples of assessment tasks were used to highlight how the UDL principles could be embedded. Teachers then highlighted the three principles on their own tasks. When they were confident, they annotated the UDL principles and looked at ways to strengthen the design of their own tasks. Some teachers then moved to explore how the UDL framework could be embedded into units of work. Examples and guided practice were provided before teachers began to annotate and enhance their own teaching programs. Design templates were provided to help teachers consider and plan for student variability for each lesson. These templates generated a lot of positive discussion. Teachers were encouraged to keep a record of the goals they were setting for themselves and a reflection on how they were progressing. So how does all that design and planning translate into results? What did the data tell us about the confidence of the teachers in the UDL project to implement the framework into assessment design? Teachers use the same pre and post survey to measure their confidence. Overall, there was a substantial teacher growth in all aspects of applying the UDL framework. The biggest growth in increased confidence was applying the UDL guidelines and checkpoints. While some teachers had a general understanding of the three principles prior to the project, they had limited or no knowledge of the guidelines and checkpoints. In the engagement principle, teachers became more confident in providing opportunities for students to self-reflect and in providing mastery-orientated feedback. In the representation principle, there was increased teacher confidence in clarifying and pre-teaching subject vocabulary and in providing students with worked examples and exemplars to highlight critical features. Interestingly, this was the model extensively used for teachers during the sessions that they translated into their own teaching practice. In the action and expression principle, there was increased teacher confidence in providing explicit teaching and guided practice and goal setting for students. Again, this was modelled throughout the sessions with worked examples provided first, followed by guided practice before teachers worked on their own subject assessment tasks. So what did the teachers in the UDL project learn about UDL and assessment design? Here is some final words from our teachers. I used to think our assessment tasks were well structured, but now I think there is room for change that will make them even more accessible to our students. I used to think that when writing assessment tasks, each task could only take one form, but now I think that it's better to provide options for students in order to meet their individual learning needs and enable each student to achieve to their best of their ability. I used to think that creative assessment strategies was in the too hard basket, but now I think I can implement them effectively in my classes this year. I used to think UDL was differentiating tasks for a particular student, but now I think it's about the design of the task to cater for each learner in every class in every year. My key learning from this project was by embedding the UDL framework clearly and explicitly into the design of the professional learning, Teachers walked away with a much clearer understanding of the application of UDL in practice. Thank you for your time and I hope that there were some sections that were useful and could translate into your planning and design of professional learning for teachers in your schools and districts.